Hey everyone, Ryan here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a full tutorial on how to use Helium 10 for FBA Wholesale. Essentially, we're going to be diving into Helium 10's most powerful features, and this includes Black Box and Cerebro. So by the end of this video, you will have a step-by-step -step blueprint for finding profitable products to sell, along with some other tips and tricks to give you an edge over the competition. So let's get started. Now, before we get into the tutorial itself, if you're serious about taking your Amazon business to the next level, then you definitely need Helium 10 in your toolkit. And we've got a special deal for our viewers. So if you use the link in the description or enter code ThriveMedia20 at checkout, you'll be able to save 20% on your first six months, or you can use the code ThriveMedia10 and then save 10% every month. Once you've created your account and signed into it, you will land on the dashboard, which looks like this. And we're going to start things off by using Blackbox. Now, Blackbox is one of the best tools for product research. It's essentially where you will go through Amazon's catalog and pinpoint the products that meet your specific criteria. Now, when you first open Blackbox, you might feel a little overwhelmed by all the filters or the options, but that's normal. We're going to break it down step by step so that you can easily navigate through it and find the products that you want. And we're going to start by choosing the market and the categories. The first thing that you'll want to do is to select your target marketplace for Amazon. For most beginners, that's going to be Amazon.com or the United States market. But if you're interested in expanding to other countries, Helium 10 supports a wide range of international marketplaces as well. After that comes the part where you have to choose the product categories. And with that, we can search across all of the Amazon's categories at once. And I find it helpful to narrow it down based on your interests and expertise. If you're a beginner, I would recommend going for arts, crafts and sewing, home and kitchen, kitchen and dining and office products. These categories tend to have a good balance of demand and competition with plenty of opportunities for innovation. With that said, don't be afraid to think outside the box and choose a different niche if you want to. It could suit you better than it did for me. After that, we would go down to the filters and then set a price range for the products that we want to target. This will impact your profit margins, inventory costs and overall business model. For beginners, I would typically recommend starting with a minimum price of around $13 and a maximum of $55. This is great for healthy profit margins while keeping your initial investment manageable. Cheaper products tend to have thin margins because Amazon's fees eat up a large percentage of the sale price. And products over $60 can be a little bit risky for new sellers because they require a larger upfront investment and may have slower turnover. Of course, as you gain more experience and capital, you can always expand into higher price points. But when you're just starting out, it's best to play it safe and validate your product ideas with a smaller financial commitment. The next filter we're going to use is the review count filter. And this tells you how many customer reviews a product has accumulated over time. And this is good for its popularity and the market traction. Again, for beginners, I recommend setting a maximum of about 300 reviews. This ensures that the product has proven demand, but is not completely saturated with the competitors. If a product basically only has a handful of reviews, it might be a sign that there is not enough demand to sustain profitable business. But if it has thousands of reviews, then it's probably dominated by the big brands with deep pockets and economies that are going to be tough to compete with. So I'm going to set my filter to 200. After that, there is the review rating filter. And this one is all about finding the products that customers are not entirely satisfied with. I like to set the maximum review rating of around 4.2 stars because products with lower ratings often have common complaints or pain points that you can address with even better versions. And we don't want to go too low with the ratings because that could indicate a fundamentally flawed product. So in my opinion, 3.5 to 4.2 star range would be good. After that, we will go and set the monthly revenue. This is the filter where we can specify how much money the product is making every month. I like to set a range of $4,000 to $15,000. That's how you can find products that are generating consistent sales without going into too competitive saturated markets. Of course, it's essential to factor in the size and weight of your target products. In general, smaller or lighter products are going to be more profitable and easier to manage than the large heavy items. Again, that's because of Amazon charges and fees based on the size and weight of the products that you store in their warehouses and ship to customers. To keep things simple, I recommend focusing on products that fall into the small standard. These are the smaller kind of products that weigh less than 20 pounds. Once you've got all of your filters set in, go ahead and click search. And now we have a list of products that meet our specifications for price, demand, competition, and more. For the list, you can filter it further by the monthly revenue, price, search volume, review count and rating, and so much more. Take your time scrolling through the results and look for the products that look great to you. Once you've found one that looks promising, click on the listing to view it on Amazon and get a feel for the market. 
Remember that your goal is not to find a product that's completely untapped or revolutionary. In fact, that's usually a red flag. If there is zero competition, it's probably for a reason. Instead, I look for products that are selling well, but there is still room for a newcomer to go ahead and join the competition. As you go through this process, let's say I like this product for example, I can start building a short list of the potential products to pursue. Click on the heart icon right here and then you can add the product to your own list. And to make finding products even simpler, I usually filter this list by the search volume and then look for products once again. But I would recommend aiming for a short list of at least 10 products to start. And then over time, as you gain more experience and develop your own skills, you will start to hone in on the most promising opportunities quicker. Once you've had a solid list of product ideas from Blackbox, it's time to go and research from a different angle from keywords. Keywords are the search terms and phrases that the shoppers use to find products on the platform. And that's where we are going to use Magnet. This is Helium 10's powerful keyword research tool. And to get started with Magnet, we simply want to enter a broad keyword or phrase related to the product idea. This could be anything like, for example, a dog toy. You don't need to overthink it at this stage. The goal is to give Magnet a starting point to work from. And just like with Blackbox, Magnet allows you to filter the results based on a variety of criteria to help you find the most promising keywords. While you can go and fill all of the filters, the two most important ones are the search volume and the word count. Search volume here refers to the number of times a particular keyword is typed into Amazon's search bar each month. So the higher the search volume, the more potential traffic you could capture by ranking for that keyword. But I would recommend setting a minimum search volume of around 500 and a maximum of 4,000 to start with. Again, to find enough demand, but at the same time, not too competitive. And word count on the other hand refers to the number of individual words into the keyword phrase. So the longer, more specific phrases tend to be less competitive and more targeted than the shorter, broader terms. For example, the dog toy is a very broad keyword with a ton of search volume, and of course, it's incredibly competitive. But on the other hand, if we search for something like a durable toy for aggressive chewers, this would be a more specific kind of keyword that's likely to be easier to rank for and attract a more targeted audience. So I would set the minimum word count of three to filter out the broad generic terms and then focus on the longer, more descriptive phrases that are more likely to convert for us. Once you've got your filters set, click apply filters and then take a look at the resulting keyword list. We would see the estimated monthly search volume of each listing, the number of competing products, magnet IQ score, which is a metric by Helium 10 that assesses the overall opportunity and so many more. In general, keywords with a magnet IQ score of 50 or higher are considered a good opportunity and are worth exploring further. The next step would be to rinse and repeat this process. So once you've identified a few promising keywords from your initial search, rinse and repeat the process with variations and related terms. The more you dig, the more hidden gems that you are likely to cover and don't be afraid to get creative. Sometimes the most profitable keywords are the ones that your competitors have not even thought of yet. Now that we have a solid list of potential products and keywords to target, it's crucial to go ahead and do some competitive research. And for that, we are going to use Cerebro. Cerebro is a great competitor analysis tool and it allows you to reverse engineer all of the rivals keywords strategies and see exactly what's working for them. To use Cerebro, we have to go ahead and get the competitor's ASIN or the Amazon standard identification number. This is a unique code that Amazon uses to identify each product in its catalog. So if you have Helium 10's extension downloaded, you can go and find the ASIN on any products page or just scroll through Amazon and find the ASIN for each product. So I'm going to select this keyword, search for it on Amazon, find a product and then find the ASIN for it. And then from there, we are going to go back to Helium 10 and navigate to the Cerebro tool, paste the ASIN into the search bar at the top of the page and then click get keywords. And then after that, Cerebro will generate the list of all the keywords that product is ranking for on Amazon. You might find thousands or tens of thousands of keywords put into that list. And at first glance, the sheer volume of data in Cerebro can be overwhelming. But the metrics that matter the most and you should be focusing on are the estimated monthly search volume, the competing product's current rank for that keyword, and the Cerebro IQ score. So as you scroll through the list, look for keywords that meet the following criteria. So a high search volume, about 500 plus, high rank for the competing product. You can hover over it like that and then see the top 10. Relatively low competition and a high Cerebro IQ score. These are the keywords that are driving the most traffic and sales for your competitor. And that's where you have the best chance of joining the market and taking a share for yourself. And then you just rinse and repeat this product once you've identified a handful of high opportunity keywords from your initial Cerebro search. 
You just plug those keywords back into Magnet and then see what other related terms come up. And then you take those new keywords and plug them into Cerebro to see what other products are ranking for them. So product research may seem a little overwhelming at the start, but the more you practice and play around with these tools, the more intuitive and natural it will become. And then as you launch and grow your products, you will gain all the experience that you need to go back and feed it into your research process. And with that, we will have reached the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions on Helium 10 or Amazon FBA, then go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. Definitely consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any follow-up Amazon FBA or Helium 10 content that we are going to make in the future.